Hey there, everybody. John Morris here with JohnMorrisOnline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you something I think is pretty cool, which is how to redirect the various error messages that might pop up on your site to custom error pages. So you've probably seen the standard ones that come with your browser your serv on your server. And oftentimes, they're not very user-friendly. And you may have also seen something like maybe WordPress where they, they redirect to, most themes will redirect to a custom page. Or you may have seen websites that you went to where they had kind of a custom error page and wondered how they did that. Well, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do that. You know, I'm always harping on how important creating content to attract new clients is to you guys. It's how you get your name out there and let people get to know you. It's how you get and keep those people's attention. And it's how you use that attention to get those people to trust you enough to hire you as their developer. In fact, my blog content is the prime mover behind my entire business. Without it, I'd have no business. But I know a lot of you are just starting out or are new to the idea of blogging for your business and aren't sure how to get your blog started. Well, fear no more, because I recently created a blog tutorial where I walk you step-by-step step through starting your blog. From picking your domain name, to setting up your hosting, to installing your blog software, and every little trick that I've learned along the way the last 11 years to make sure you're set up to be successful with it. Now, it's a completely free, no email sign up or strings attached blog tutorial that you can find over at johnsbloggingtutorial.com. So go check it out and let's get you blogging and bringing in new clients for your web design business. Head on over to johnsbloggingtutorial.com. One thing I want to make sure and point out before I get too far into this tutorial is this particular code. I don't want to take credit for having come up with this code. This is actually something I saw over on CSSTricks.com. So that's actually where kind of this code here up at the top comes from. But when I saw it, I thought it was, you know, pretty cool. And I wanted to make a video about it and explain it a little bit more in depth. But I'll make sure and link to that original article in uh, the description of this video. All right. So first off, let's start off. You can see over here on the left hand side here, I have a kind of standard error page. So this is just a website uh, that I happen to own and here's a standard error page. You've probably seen this a number of times. It can be a little bit different for different servers and browsers and so forth. So, um, but you know, this is again, fairly standard. Now let me kind of, let me go ahead and change this so that we can look at what we're wanting to get with our custom error page. All right, so let me go ahead and then just refresh this. And now you can see, now I didn't go all out and do a ton with this, but you can see here that now we have something that looks quite a bit different, really. We have a kind of a gray background here. We have a white kind of content area. The text the or the font is a little bit different. The actual text here is a little bit different. So we've been able to change this up a little bit. And so... You can kind of go as far as you want with this once you get this basic setup that I'm going to show you in place. All right, so let's start and I'll show you how to actually get the setup in place and get your website redirecting your error, error pages to a custom page. And then we can talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do with the error page. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is you actually need to create an HT access file. And in that HT access file, you need to, uh, this is the important part down here. So this just makes it so nobody can actually browse your HT access file. But this down here is how we redirect to a custom error page. And so you can see that we've just specified all of the different errors that we want to handle with a custom error page. So 403, 404, 405. You could do as many of these ones as you wanted. You could do however you wanted to handle this or do fewer, however you want to approach it for your website, but you want to specify a line for each one here. So you're going to specify one uh, error document per line and in it, then you're going to just specify the page that you want them to go to when they encounter this area. 
or this error. Now you could create different pages for each one of these here and if you wanted to do that you certainly could but what we're doing is we're sending them all to the same page. Now it so happens that I've put this in a folder called errors and it's the page error.php. Again this location these names could be anything that you want but as long as you just point this to them from the root of your site here. So this is the root of the site dot com slash errors error.php. That's where this, this file is hosted. And so this is the same file. And so again, you just go through and specify what errors you want to handle and point them to this file. All right. So that's all you need to do with the HD access. One little note on this. If, you know, for example, this doesn't work in my nitrous app here, my code editor here. They, they must do something that it doesn't recognize these changes in HD access. Also, if you happen to have uh, a WordPress blog, a WordPress blog installed on your domain, WordPress tends to hijack all of these error pages. So, you know, or, or a lot of them, 404 for sure. So you may not, um, you know, you may have issues with that. But if you're you're working with a standard kind of normal web server, no WordPress, uh, then you can you can do this. All right. All right, so then the big thing here is what goes on inside this error.php. So let's just kind of walk through this code kind of step by step here. So the first thing that we're going to do, obviously, this is a PHP file. This is where people are going to land. And what what the the idea here is to figure out what error code they they received and then create a different kind of message for each error code. And so the way that we figure out error code they received is we use our server variables here and we use redirect status. Okay, so that's going to tell us what error they received. And then from there, we can set up our we set up an uh, array here of our status codes and we just specify for each error code what we want uh, our title and our message to be. So, for example, here for our 403 code. Then we have an, an array inside of that. So this is a multi-dimensional array. And we have the title. So the first element in this uh, secondary array here is going to be the title. And the second element is going to be the message. So 403 and then the server has refused to fulfill your request. Now, these are pretty simple. But oftentimes the, the reason you're doing this is to make it more user friendly for your website visitors. So you probably want to take a little time and actually maybe write a longer message here and give them some options. Ultimately, what you, what, what you want to get to is give them some options for what to do, right? Because they're on that error page and it's very, very highly likely that they're just going to click off and never come back. So you really want to try and capture them and get them back to where they need to go. So you want to explain the error message and let them know what's going on and let them know, you know, you have to think of your standard website user probably doesn't know a lot about technology and maybe a little freaked out by the error message. So you want to calm them down and then you want to give them options for once they say re recognize, oh, OK, there's you know bad URL or I you know went somewhere I'm maybe not supposed to or whatever. Then you want to give them options for where they can go to get back on track. Okay, so those are two things that you want to do. You want to calm them down and then you want to get them back on track. And so you can just do that with your messages here. You probably don't want to have 403 forbidden <laughs> as your title. You may want to have something a little more user friendly. But again, these are kept pretty simple so that you understand what they are and you can change, change them accordingly. All right, so you can see we just go through the ones that we want to handle. Now these match up obviously to the ones that we've specified over here. All right, so go through, fill out that array. And then down here, this is kind of where we associate um, the error they received with the messages from our array. So we set the title as codes status zero. So the codes array, the status we receive. So this, this is going to this variable is going to be equal to 403 or 404 or 405. It'll be a number depending on what error they received. So our codes array 403 for the status and then zero is the title. It's the first element in this array. So that gives us the title. So we're just setting that explicitly here. And then for the message is the same idea. So it's codes array. It's our status. Let's say example 403 and then it's 
the second element, or in this case, one, because it's zero based. So that's this message here. And so we set that explicitly to message. Now, truthfully, you don't really need to mess with this at all. If that doesn't make a ton of sense to you, that's fine. You don't really need to mess with it. Just know that the, the way that this array is set up here, if you stick to the way it's set up, put your title here, put your message here, uh, leave these codes kind of how they are here, or you know, if you want to change them for different codes, whatever. But uh, if you leave the structure of this array how it is, then this is going to work. It's only when you want to come in here if you want to change the structure, not the content, but just the structure, that you're going to have to edit this down here. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, then we're going to do kind of a catch-all. So we're going to check and see if there's actually uh, a title set here, right? So uh, we're going to see if if we got a response code that we're handling here. So uh, we're going to, if the title equals false, right, or the string length of the status is, does not equal three. So we always know that this is going to be a three-digit code, or at least the ones we're handling here. So... Uh, if the string length of that status is not equal to is not three characters, then something is going on that we haven't accounted for. Okay, so in that case, then we're just going to give them a generic message here. Now, I just put unrecognized status code, and then the website returned unrecognized status code. That won't mean much to your visitors again. So you may obviously want to flesh this out and make this more user friendly. But again, I've put it in here so that you kind of understand what it's for and you can adapt it as necessary. So this is a catch-all basically if one of, if the status or the error code that was received by this page isn't one of the ones that we're accounting for. All right, so that helps us kind of cover all of our bases. From there, that's, so that that's how to capture the code and then uh, set it up so that we can use it. Now we have two variables for every error that we might receive called title and message. Now we can create just a regular HTML page below here, as you see we're doing here, and we can use those variables, title and message, to display the proper code, okay? So this is where you can set this page up however you want. Now I've just done a basic kind of body with a, a content div, an H1 tag, and a paragraph. Very, very simple. But you could get as fancy as you wanted to with this HTML document. And you can see I've done some just kind of basic CSS in here. But you can style this however you want. Now, one piece of advice I would give you is to remember that this is an error page and you're not exactly sure what the error might be. For example, uh, gateway timeout, bad gateway, internal server error. It's a possible that there's something else going on with your site. So if you start linking to a bunch of other resources on your site, you may <laughs> have issues. And so uh, I would suggest that whatever you're going to do, keep it inside of this page. And what I mean by that is I'm not linking to an external style sheet. Now, normally I do this with my tutorials so you can see it all together, but I recommend that. But then I go and I recommend that you put this in an external style sheet and link it in. In this particular case, I would say keep your, your styling inside of this page simply because you don't know for sure if you're going to have access to those resources or what else could be going on. And then it could throw off your page and really defeats the purpose of having a custom error page. So I would say try to keep as much of this stuff in this page as possible. Now, obviously, if you're going to put an image in there, you're not going to have a choice in that regard because you have to, you know, you have to upload that somewhere and then link it in. Um, but again, as much as possible, I would suggest keeping everything that you need to make this page work inside of the page itself. All right. So then again, you can, like I said, you can make this page as fancy as you want. You can change the status codes how you want. Uh, and make your give yourself a, a custom error page for your website that's useful to your website visitors instead of these kind of gaudy, um, fear-inducing error messages that you see on a lot of sites. Now, one last thing um, before we wrap this up. In this particular setup, uh, my HT access file I actually have in the root or my public HTML folder. Maybe it's a www folder or it might be a HT docs folder on your server. The root of your server, the, the very first um, folder that shows public facing files. That's where I have this HT access file so that it shows up for it. it 
It's the error handler. It's the HT access file for the, the entire website. So you just want to make sure and put this in the right place. If you're going to use it to handle all the errors on your site, make sure and put it in the root. Um, and then point here to the proper URL header here. You can set these explicitly here if you want to, um, but you don't have to. You can use relative URLs. But just make sure that you get the HT access um, file in the root of your server so it'll handle all of your error pages. Hey guys, you probably heard me talking about the importance of starting your blog to get new clients. And you may have even taken my tutorial at johnsbloggingtutorial.com. But I want to go further and not only help you get your blog started, but also help you get your first few visitors. You know, I found momentum to be such a huge factor in giving you the motivation to keep going with your blog and your web development career. And I want to give you a shot in the arm and get you off to a running start. Now, I'm blessed to have a large and engaged audience. In fact, my YouTube channel is thriving with nearly 100,000 video views per month and over 18,000 subscribers. Plus, my email list grows every single day and is now currently over 23,000 subscribers, all of which translates into 40,000 plus page views of my website each and every month, which is frankly something I never would have imagined just a few years ago. It truly is amazing, and as I mentioned, it's the secret to success behind my entire business. Well, what if I promoted your website to that audience of mine? I'm confident you would pick up a few new visitors and followers of your own. And I wonder how quickly you could grow your audience. Well, that's what I want to find out. Now, to get the details on this and how I can help, you want to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash publicity. But you'll need to do it before you start your blog. So head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash publicity right away and let's get you off to a running start with your blog.